Hello guys, so this is the Polyglot Programming and on this video we're gonna learn about what scenes and nodes are and what they're used for and we're gonna do a couple of things with, with them so you can see them in action right so what are scenes and nodes right so scene, a scene in in Godot is it can be anything a scene can be your level a scene can be a character a scene can be a house can be a weapon so a scene can be comparable to other game engines uh, to an, an actual level or also a prefab for example right um, and nodes, nodes are actually the smallest part, the smallest building blocks in Godot. And, and a scene is basically composed of a tree of nodes. So a node, it could be, um, uh, in some cases, node can be compar com uh, comparable to components, for example, in, in Unity, for example, right? For example, you have the collision component, and here you also have the collision node. Right, and you guys are gonna see that in action right now. So what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna create a simple character, which is is gonna be a tree, uh, a, a, a node tree. Is gonna we're gonna create a main scene, and then we're gonna create another scene, which we're gonna use it to spawn randomly in our main scene. And so this is gonna be quite fun. So let's get started, right? So first, let's create our main scene here, right? So. Let's just call it main scene. Let's save this. Uh, okay, you see our main scene just showed up over here, right? And to, so to get started, let's start. Let's create a guy which is gonna be our player, right? Or a character. Right, we're not gonna make him move or anything today, but that that's just a. Uh, uh, so okay, so we created this character 2D body. Um, <coughs> which uh, sorry I didn't really show the description so a character to the body is basically is a, is a 2d physics node uh, usually used for characters that move around the scene right and as you can see here we added here so we have our node our main scene node which is a node 2d node and then we have our character 2d which is nested inside this guy and and right now we have our explanation point here which he tells us since this guy is is a character that's supposed to move so it's basically telling us hey you also need a collision for it okay so let's let's add a collision for it so then you we're gonna create this we're gonna right click on the character we're gonna create add node and here we're gonna look for collision okay so we're gonna add a collision shape 2d cool so now you see the, the explan explanation point um, it's not on the character anymore but now it's on the collision itself and then if we click here it's gonna tell us what to do so okay so the shape must be provided for collision shape 2d okay so let's let's add a shape and how do we add a shape right so for every node that we add in here you can see that some things are changing here on the right side so yeah so this is the inspector right and for every node we have different uh, properties on the inspector and what he's talking about here is this one the shape so if you click here we're gonna create a new shape let's create a rectangle shape and as you can see here it he created this guy over here which is a rectangle shape but our character doesn't really have a visual right so let's add a visual so if we're gonna click on the character again right click add node so let's add a sprite all right so okay so we added a sprite again you can see that the inspector that it has different properties than every other one okay and let's just add the icon for for go dot as a sprite over here okay cool uh, our guy is bigger so what we could do here is that we can either make our sprite uh, smaller or we can just make the collision bigger so let's just select the collision this left click and drag doesn't need to be doesn't need to be exact because we're not gonna actually make this collide with anything right and there you go okay so now we have our our character so great uh, one thing that I would like to briefly explain since we added a collision shape right so if you go to the to the parent object here to the node you're gonna see a collision uh, section over here and there there are two two different types of properties here so there are layers 
right? And there are masks. Layers are basically the layers that these this node is part of it. So this guy is of layer one, and mask is what other nodes are is this guy going to collide with, right? So this guy is of layer one. This is also going to collide with layer one. But let's say that okay, I don't want the player to collide with other players, so let's just change this to layer two. Right, and then of course you can add names to it, and you can make it easier to understand. But that, this is just a gist of it. I'm not gonna get too much into it because it's not the focus of this video. But I just wanted to give a brief explanation of it. And since we're talking about players, let's click here and let's just call this guy player. Great. So now we have a player. Uh, if we save the scene and if we play the scene, we're gonna see. Okay, look, our guy is right here awesome uh, so the next thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna add a script right we're gonna add a script to our to the main scene right we're gonna add a script to the main scene right um, no not the player I want to add a script to the main scene main scene yes awesome great so in here like I said what we want to do here is that we want to get another scene and we want to spawn randomly uh, within our viewport right so to do that the first thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna call use this keyword called export Var, we're gonna declare this property. Let's call it square scene, and we're gonna define it as a packed scene. This just means that we're gonna make a reference to another scene. And what does this export means? This export just means that we're gonna define this in the in the editor, right? So if you go back to the 2D tab here, and I'm gonna choose the scene, you're gonna see here that there's a square scene here, but where is that scene? So we need to define that, right? So let's do that right now. So if we click scene here, new scene here, we're just gonna add a color rect node, which is just a, a, a node. Let's just add a, a little bit of color, and that's that's it. But let's just let's just call this guy square. You can see here that now we have another scene here called square. There's another tab over there called square. That's our, our new scene. So now if we go back to the main scene, we can just take this guy from the file system here and drag it to our property. So now it's set. That's awesome. So now let's go back to our script, right? So again, so let's think about the plan here. So the, our goal is to uh, spawn a square at a time interval uh, within the screen um, of the game, right? So first, let's define a spawn interval. Let's say two seconds. I think that's good. And then let's define a property called screen size because we're going to reuse that that a lot of times, and we're actually going to assign this this screen size in a method called ready, right? And here, I'm just going to call screen size equal get viewport dot size. Okay. So now we have this guy. Uh, this ready function. Um, it's it's basically called when a node or any children gets into the scene so that's that's the star function for any node right and it's usual where you can initialize some stuff right another important function is one function called process right which if you look here it's called um, it's called on every frame as fast as possible, and delta is the time since the previous frame, right? So on some game engines, delta is called delta time, or it's uh, and here's just called delta, right? So this guy is going to be called on every frame. So this guy is the guy that we're going to use to actually keep track of the time and also to 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 spawn 
uh, a square on the screen, right? So to keep track of the time is quite easy, right? So you just do spawn interval um, minus delta because the time is the last frame, and then if spawn uh, less or equal than zero, then we're going to define another function called spawn square, right? And here we just set the spawn interval back to two so he can keep, so he can start the clock. And now we just need to restart the function to, to, do, to define the function the square, uh, spawn square, right? And here, the first thing we're gonna need we're gonna, we need to do is that we need to instantiate because when we define this guy here, we're just telling what is the thing that we want to instantiate. We're not actually instantiating anything, um, right? So here we're gonna instantiate. So we're gonna take, we're gonna create an instance. So we're create another variable, square, um, square scene. And here we just call it instantiate. That's it. We don't need any parameters right now for this for this particular case, right? And okay, so instantiate, we have an instance of that somewhere in memory, right? And now we need to set a position, right? So to set a position, we're, gonna, we're basically gonna create a vector two, right? Uh, of um, of a, uh, a vector two of a random point on the screen, right? And to get a random point, we basically need a random uh, x and a random y, and for that we're using this function called random f, which is re basically returns a random float between two points, which in our case is gonna be zero, and let's take the screen size x minus uh, a small offset, all right? And then we do the same thing for, for the y, Screen size dot y. Let's use the same offset. Okay, so this is great. And now we have we instantiate any memory. We set the position, and now we j all we need to do is just we just need to call add child square, right? And by doing this, um, we're basically taking the instance of this node and we're adding to the scene. Right, and if we go back here, let's try running this script, run this scene now to see what happens. Oh, look at that, look at our square. Oh, there's another one. So where's the other one gonna show up? There, there you go. So yeah, this is pretty cool. So now we just saw how to actually create two scenes and actually uh, using GD script, instantiate another one. Now let's do something else let's do something which is which is pretty which is more practical right so let's make this guy move right um for that the same way that we created a script for main scene which is selected and we, we click the the plus button let's create let's select player and let's just click here right okay so now we have this guy right so what we want to do here is just we just want to make this guy move uh if we use uh up, down, left, or right, All right? And to do that, we're gonna do that. Uh, so first thing we need to do is that let's let's define a speed. So uh, that we want to move this guy 400. And where we're gonna do that? We're gonna we need to do that on the process that's called on every uh, that it is called on every. On every frame, right? Um, and for that, we we have the speed that we wanna um, that we wanna move the character on, and we need to define um, a velocity, which is gonna be based on which key we're pressing, and based on that, we're gonna update the position, right? So let's uh, let's start the variable velocity. to a vector to um, zero. Okay, so now how are we going to get the input, right? So on go dot, I'm not gonna get too much into the input system here, but on go dot, to define the input, you can just come in here, project, project settings, and then you go to the input tab map, and then here you can define your own inputs, or you can just check 
what the built-in inputs are. The ones that we're going to use is are the UI left, which is which is the left left key on the keyboard, or the the joypad UI right, your up and UI down. So this is what we're going to use, um, and the and the and the way you use that is that you do the if input s action pressed and here he is already suggesting the ones that are there you can just you can type it or you can just look for it so for example ui um, ui ui left and here you're just gonna say velocity ui left equals x minus 1 and now you're gonna do so UI you're gonna do the same for all the other ones UI right is a plus 1 here and UI down is an also a plus and UI up is a minus. The only difference is that this is Y and this is also Y. And now you we update the velocity, right, based on the speed. So for that we need to normalize the velocity times the speed, because we don't want the guy to move just one pixel or whatever um, and then we update ah, not this uh, position velocity times delta and this should work so let's check it out so like if we click here ah there you go now we're moving see so this is it guys uh, so today we we, we went through what scenes and nodes are we learned how to uh, randomly instantiate a uh, a scene into another scene using GD script we learned how to add scripts to different scenes and we also learned how to make make um, a node move move uh, inside a scene uh, with a rel re rel relatively simple code so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video uh, don't forget to like and subscribe because there are a lot more videos coming after this and see you next time